Now, the last thing to take a look at in this chapter of the workspace is color management. Now, it's great that we can create lots of different colors inside of applications like Illustrator. And if we're using colors on a regular basis, particularly for branded colors, then it's important that color looks consistent throughout all of our documents and our projects. So in order to be able to synchronize those colors and ensure they look the same way when they're produced, we have to go up to the edit menu and on the Mac of the PC, you'll go down to something called color settings. When I left click on that, a dialog box pops up on screen. Now it will be populated with predominantly drop down menus and the things inside of those menus won't make much sense. To be fair, I thought the same thing when I saw this several years ago. So why do we have to come to this dialog box? Well, as human beings, if we are lucky enough, then we have good eyesight and we can interpret the world around us. It's done for us with the wonders of biology. We don't really have to think about whether something is red or blue or green and so on and so forth. But for digital devices, that's very different. It sees the world in a very different way, obviously a digital way. So when we, for example, jump on a plane and go to another part of the world and they speak a different language, in order to communicate effectively, it's better to speak in that local language so we can be understood and we can converse properly. It's very similar for color. When you have a document and you pass it from one application to another, those two applications need to speak the same language, a language of color that they both understand and they can communicate how something should look so that a color isn't just any old red or blue. It's a specific type of red or blue, for example. So how does all of this really fascinating information help us populate this dialog box with the correct options for us? Well, Adobe detects which part of the world I live and work in, and it happens to be the UK. So it groups me up with Europe in here and it gives me a setting right at the top. This is called Europe general purpose three. So anything that's a setting will define what happens in the other options in the dialog box. It's a saved set of options. Now, if you're working in a different part of the world, like North America, this would then read something like North American general purpose two. This isn't the best option that we could choose, certainly not for flexibility. So if I click on this drop down menu, you'll see that I have other options in here that relate to my part or my region of the world. And the other option that I'm going to pick in here is called Europe prepress three, because it's going to give me more flexibility. If you're living in and working in North America, then you'd choose something like North American prepress two. When I click on that, it changes some of the options lower down. But the key thing in here is it's down to RGB and CMYK because they're the two main types of projects that you'll create projects for screen and projects for print. So if you're going to create something that's intended to be viewed on a digital device, well, the way that those colors are created on screen is with red and green and blue phosphors, hence the RGB. It just so happens that Adobe RGB 1998, has one of the widest range of colors possible. So it gives us a tremendous amount of flexibility. CMYK, which is for print work, is a mixture of cyan, magenta, yellow and black. And here this is an ISO standard. And these options are pretty much good to go for me in Europe. All I would add to this is down towards the bottom, there are three check boxes. And these essentially are dialog boxes that are going to pop up on screen. If your documents you are opening or you're copying and pasting, if they're not tagged with the same color language of, in my case, Europe Prepress 3, it will say to me, hey, did you know this is not tagged with Europe Prepress 3? How dare it? Well, in actual fact, you can turn those checkboxes off. Illustrator will still do all the things we need to do. It will still color manage. It will still portray them into this lovely workflow of color. You just don't need to be told about it every time. So you can turn those check boxes off. When I do notice that my Europe prepress three changes to custom because by turning off a check box, I have customized this. So if you wish to, you could save this. You can go up and click on save and then it will pick the correct folder where you need to have that saved in on your hard drive in the illustrator installation folder and just give it a name. And I'm going to call this GB colors and then I'll click on save. And there it goes. It's in there now and I can pick that whenever I need to. The thing is that you'll probably just do this once and then it will stay active inside of Illustrator while you're using it. So from here, then I can go down to the bottom and I can click OK. So all of that rather fascinating information just helps us manage the consistency of color for all of our screen and print based projects. Thankfully, you'll be pleased to know that we're moving on to doing things inside of Illustrator in the next chapter.